Welcome to Tips and Tricks. Today we're going to go over optimizing and fixing your Wi-Fi connection. It's actually a, a hot day today and uh, instead of working in, in the office, my home office, I was going to work out in the backyard and I found out that uh, my Wi-Fi signal wasn't so great out there. Uh, so I thought I'd sort of analyze the, uh, the Wi-Fi and see if we could kind of improve things. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit uh, how we can do that. On Mac OS, I think you'll all probably be familiar with this icon up here where we can see how many bars we're getting to, you know, show a basic view of signal strength and how well we're connected to uh, the closest Wi-Fi hotspot. And if we click here, then we can see which Wi-Fi we're connected to and which other ones are in the surrounding area that we could see and, and could join. But we can actually get some more detail uh, than, than this uh, right off the bat that can really be uh, helpful to us. So you'll find if you hold down the option key on your keyboard and click the same icon, all of a sudden we get a lot more information about the hotspot that we're connected to. So I'm connected obviously to the Gemsbach one in our office and we get lots of information and I'll, I'll go over that with you. So we can see quickly uh, what the IP address is that we have on the wireless network at that moment. And that can help us if we're having any sort of uh, conflicts on the network uh, where there might be multiple people with the same ID if there's not enough addresses. That's kind of a different topic, but uh, but it's, it's useful. Uh, what router or internet gateway that we have, uh, whether we can actually reach the internet, is a signal coming through so that way if your email is not coming in or your um, uh, web pages aren't loading that type of thing you can see does it say reachable or not because you can still have a Wi-Fi connection but if there's something wrong with the gateway you might not actually have an internet connect connection. Security uh, shown what we're uh, logged in as so uh, what type of uh, passwording and uh, and authentication system we're using. I think in most cases, most people will see WPA2 or WPA. Uh, WEP is an older one that isn't really used anymore. It's not as secure. The BSSID is uh, the unique number of the uh, Wi-Fi connecting radio and how it's connected to the uh, the address it uses to connect to the Wi-Fi. So it's kind of like the, uh, the MAC, the MAC address uh, that you use uh, in Ethernet. Uh, so it's a unique number, uh, unique to every computer to uh, to show, uh, allow it to connect using its own address. The channel that you're connecting, uh, and I'll show you a little bit later how you can analyze this and sort of see where that matters. Ideally, you want to be running on a channel that a lot of the other networks that are within view of your computer are not on, and that creates sort of less interference, less noise, and that type of thing. I'll show you in a, in a little while how to uh, view that a bit better. Uh, the country code uh, that you're using. So uh, for a lot of you, it'll say US. Uh, here I'm in Canada, so uh, it says CA. Uh, the RSSI, so uh, that's actually the, um, uh, the actual um, signal strength. And so you'll want to see uh, closer to zero on this one. And then the noise uh, is you know how much interference there is on the uh, on the channel, and I can show you actually uh, in a little bit how we how we graph that out and can kind of uh, see that the transmit rate. So we want uh, higher numbers there are better rather than here lower numbers are better. So uh, so here I'm pretty close to my Wi-Fi hotspot, so I'm getting actually uh, 500 megabits per second. Um, if I go upstairs, it actually, my connection's still good, but my, my connection speed drops down uh, because there would be some interference between floors. So this drops down to about 50. Uh, and then you'll see later when we go out in the backyard uh, how it'll drop down further. And then the PHY mode, which uh, shows actually the protocol that we're using to connect. Um, so it's usually 802.11, and uh, it could be A, B, N, um, depending on your uh, wireless hotspot. So for me, we have an airport extreme here, so we're connecting using 802.11n, uh, and that's one of the faster protocols. And then the MCS index is also a measure of sort of signal quality and strength. So you'll see not only do we have this information that we can get kind of a quick view of what's going on, 
but actually we can go here to open wireless diagnostics and it actually opens a program that's buried in the system folder that you don't usually see called wireless diagnostics and a lot of people when they go through will go through this um, wizard here and it'll sort of run through and at the end give you some suggestions which are just kind of generic suggestions on how to improve your uh, your network um, but rather than going there and you can try stepping through but it really doesn't give you a lot of information rather than going through there if you go here under the window menu then you can see uh, there's uh, some other modules that we can use uh, to get further information here. Uh, Assistant is this one here, the little wizard that runs, so that one I don't really find helpful. If we go to Info, we get a view kind of like this view here, uh, but actually with some, some other information. Uh, and then here we get a little bit more of uh, an evaluation on what's going on, so it says uh, the quality is excellent, so we'll see how that looks later when we go outside. Uh, but we get a little, little bit more information, and uh, it, this window can stay up rather than just being when it's clicked. So we can kind of put that over to the side here so we can see that. Um, we can actually go to the log section here. And here, let's say you're having a lot of problems with your Wi-Fi, um, and you want to log it in and look at it in the console later, or or log stuff. Maybe you have um, you know a friend or relative, or you're in an office with an IT group. Uh, you can capture stuff in the logs here and then show it to them later. We can also do a network scan. And then this is where we start to see what channels are, are available. And with um, there's a lot of other tools out there that, uh, that will actually show um, a lot of this information but at a uh, you know much higher cost. So through digging through the system, we can actually uh, we can actually get a lot of information. So here, it's showing um, you know how many networks are within view of the computer right now. Uh, what channels is it best to operate under? And then so then you can go back to your uh, Wi-Fi hotspot and then you know reset its settings to use one of these channels where, where this is saying the um, you know the signals are cleaner on these channels we can leave that up too we'll just put it down here um, we can go here into performance and this actually I find to be one of the best ones too um, it'll bring up this window I'll actually put this file here too which is kind of a history file showing all the graphing information that it's going to be capturing now and it starts a live capture over time of a bunch of information so here it can show us the transfer rate so how fast the data is getting between uh, our computer and the Wi-Fi hotspot so you saw earlier here transfer rate is about 300 megabits so on the graph here it's about 300 megabits it also shows us the quality of the signal so how much noise is in, in the signal, like the quality is uh, actually a comparison of the signal strength and noise kind of put together. So it gives you like kind of a, a, a top evaluation of it. But then you get a specific graph uh, of the actual signal strength, which is essentially, you know, measured in how the bars look up here and the actual noise. So obviously less noise is better and more signal strength is better. So you want to see the, you know, the green as high as possible, the blue as low as possible uh, while this graph is going on. So we're going to leave this up and running. And then as well, we have the sniffer. We can actually check all the packets. Uh, so all the network information going back and forth between the computer and the Wi-Fi hotspot. And we can pick any channel that we want and any frequency. So if we pick one of the other channels here, that's in the other range, the 2.4 gigahertz range versus the 5 gigahertz range, then we could pick a frequency there and then capture all the information going over that. Um, so that'll actually show you what's going on on uh, any, any Wi-Fi network without you even knowing the name around you. Um, it starts getting into sort of deeper um, networking analysis uh, where you're using a program like Wireshark 
So we have it down here to analyze the files that this creates. So it's a little bit beyond the scope of what uh, what I'm trying to show today. So maybe in the future I'll, I'll have a an episode where we talk more about packet capture and that type of thing. Um, but another one that's good here is monitor. And it just gives you kind of a small screen which summarizes really what's in the performance one here. It shows you uh, our, uh, our data rate. So you can see it down here. And then our signal uh, strength and noise here as well. So if you just want to have something kind of unobtrusive running in the background rather than having the big, big white windows uh, open, uh, it's something you could kind of leave up uh, and going all the time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, carry this computer out in the backyard and then let's see how all the signals change. So I'm going to speed up the video uh, while I'm walking out there just so you don't have to uh, so you don't have to sit and wait while we're doing that. But uh, let's see if we can see how the graph changes when we do that. Okay, so I'm sitting out in the backyard now, so you might hear some uh, ambient noise. Uh, so uh, I apologize for that if, if there's a little bit of noise in the background here. But you can really see uh, how the graph has completely changed. We went from a 300 data transfer rate. Now we're dropping down at some points to zero and it's just kind of hovering in and around, you know, 70 yards. So even though I've got what looks like to be full Wi-Fi signal strength, you can see the quality is really dropped way down. So the actual speed of my internet connection or my Wi-Fi connection um, is going to be a lot slower than when I was sitting closer to the Wi-Fi hotspot and had a better uh, better connection to the signal. So even though my bars are all here, the performance just is not there. And then you'll see as well, my signal strength has gone way down. And it's kind of shifting and you'll find that too, you know, as environmental conditions change uh, and that kind of thing around you, the signal strength can dro drop up and down. And then you'll see the uh, the interference, like the noise, is not too bad actually. Where the noise gets really bad is if you're in you know, an apartment or a big office building where there's tons of um, other Wi-Fi hotspots, then the noise can be uh, be more problematic. So you'll see none of this stuff is really looking as good uh, as it was uh, when I was uh, in my office. Uh, but, um, you know, now we have got a little bit better idea of what's going on. So what you can do to actually improve your, um, your Wi-Fi experience and kind of troubleshoot your uh, your system is to you know move around your house, move around your environment with these tools open, and kind of get an idea of what's going on where. Uh, and then you can do things like um, changing the positioning of your Wi-Fi hotspot. So you could lay it on its side or turn it around uh, in the opposite direction, uh, move it to a different part of the room or the house or or your office um, to to try to cover a different area. Um, you can even do some creative stuff too, like you could, uh, let's say it's up against a wall and, and you really want the signal to push in and not sort of waste signal going outside of uh, that wall of that building. You could put a, a metal tray behind it and see if that helps kind of bounce the signals back out a little further and if these graphs and everything improve a little bit more. So with this information uh, and some creative placement of your Wi-Fi, you should really be able to fix and improve your um, your Wi-Fi signal and your experience without going to the expense of getting some of these Wi-Fi analysis tools which cost uh, in the hundreds of dollars a lot of them uh, where this one the wireless diagnostics is just built right into the Mac operating system. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this video and I hope it was helpful to you. Uh, so if it is please give it a thumbs up and share it. Share it on uh, Facebook, share it with your friends, uh, recommend it. Um, subscribe to the channel uh, we're always posting new videos and if you have any ideas of um, any other topics you'd like us to cover uh, please put it in the comments below thanks again and I'll see you in the next video